Salvage costs in general are defined as an unrecoverable cost of a product that is not sold. When we go back to the example we had about the retailer that had 50 products and they only sold 30, they had 20 left. Now there's a salvage cost, which basically is the unrecoverable cost of all those products. Once again, don't forget those 50 items, the retailer has to provide, you know, has to pay for those before they're sold. So if each of those products cost $100, then they would have $5,000 in inventory costs. So the salvage cost is the unrecoverable cost of a product that's not sold, which equals a product minus the product cost minus the salvage value. In this example, let's say that each product is $100, but they're able to sell it via rebates or overstock consignments for $50. So this results in a, in a salvage cost of e for each product of $50. So the salvage cost of that inventory that's not sold would be 20 times 50, which would be $1,000. So that salvage cost, when we do predictions and forecasting, that would be a risk that would be calculated within the forecasting. So when you... Um, well, let's go back to this here. The savage cost should be considered in any product with high potential for overstock. There are many instances in which you as a manufacturer or a supplier or as you as a retailer may want to encourage the other parties to create more product. As a retailer, you may expect to have a big sale on a product. So you may want them to create more product. As a manufacturer, you may expect to have a, have a large amount of products, but you may want to encourage the retailer to purchase more stock so that they can sell more. In this case, you would create different contract vehicles that will, be, that will help to share the risk burden of that contract. And the salvage value and the salvage cost is a big part of this. When you start to create incentives for other parties within the supply chain, you have to remember that they're going to view excess inventory as a, as a cost, as a salvage cost. So you have to find a way to relieve some of the salvage cost potential to them. So like, for instance, um, I don't know if this is going to be covered in this class or not, but like, for instance, let's say if the salvage cost is $50, you may say, for every product you do not sell, I may pay you $75. Well, the $75 is higher than the salvage cost, so they may be more inclined to create more products because their, their risk is pretty much mitigated. Now, in theory, you may want to split that in half and say, hey, look, for everyone that you do not sell, I will eat half of the salvage costs and then you can go off to rebate and consignment and sell it for the rest. So that's different ways. It depends on how open the communication is within the supply chain. If they work together to determine these salvage costs or if it's a very close system where you have to guess. So either way you have to de keep these in mind when you create the make to stock and make to order contracts, because these costs will be, reflected in how the other party views your bid. If you create a make to stock contract and you are a retailer, the manufacturer may just walk away because, well, I may have high salvage costs because I have to hold a lot of inventory in order to make sure you have your product there. I may not want to take on that risk. So you may say, okay, I'm going to make a stock contract and we will guarantee that you have so much inventory available for us to pull from at this location. And for every product that you do not sell, we will relieve your salvage costs by a certain amount. Now, conversely, if it's a make to order and you're a manufacturer trying to encourage a retailer to purchase more product or even to purchase an older product, what you would say is basically, okay, if you create this order, you, if you order more than you normally do, I will mitigate the cost of the extra product by paying you so much. So let's say in the, in the case of 50 units that we've been using in this video, if I want them to buy 60 units, I say, okay, for the 10 units that are above your 50, I will either buy back the products at cost 
or you may say, or at a salvage value that's higher than what they can normally get. This is a way that you're going to mitigate the risk from these decisions that you're trying to make people make other parties within the supply chain do that may be against their best interests.